Hi everyone, it's Dr. Julia Zweig with Julia Zweig MD, Integrative Sleep and ENT, NZ Wellness. It's so great to be here on this Facebook Live. Um, welcome. So today we are going to be talking about sleep hygiene. So what does that mean exactly? Well, hygiene means to clean. So basically, we're going to be talking about behaviors or actions that help you clean up your sleep and help you have a good night's sleep. Not just the number of hours that you're going to sleep, we want to improve that of course, but we also want to improve the quality of your sleep. So we're going to talk about some things that will help you get ready for bed and hopefully have a good night's sleep. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the sleeping environment. You want a very cold or cool room and also a dark bedroom. A lot of people use shades that block out the light, but definitely you want a dark bedroom and a cool bedroom. The second thing you want to do is perhaps uh, dim the lights before you go to sleep for maybe an hour or two. Make it a quiet environment. Maybe try some meditation. Calm yourself down. That always helps you get ready to go to sleep. Another thing that we want to do is avoid caffeine, any caffeine, after about 12 noon. And I know that's really hard for some people, but we really want to hold off on the caffeine. And caffeine can be in the form of coffee, tea, and even chocolate. I know, I didn't really say it, but yes, chocolate too. Now remember, decaffeinated coffee is not no caff, it is decaffeinated, it has low caffeine. So it still has some caffeine in it. It can still keep you up at night. So we want to stay away from caffeine products after 12 in the afternoon. So what else can we do? <clears throat> the other thing we want to do is stop using our electronics about two hours before we want to go to sleep. Why is that? Well, first of all, it might get us stressed. <laughs> we have to check that last email. We have to check that last Facebook post, etc. But the other thing is that the electronics emit what's a blue light, basically, which is a light that goes into your eyes, hits the retina in the back of your eyes, and that sends a signal to an area of your brain called the SCN, or the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and that area of the brain sends another signal to your pineal gland, which then decreases the production of melatonin. And when you decrease the production of melatonin, then it's more difficult for you to go to sleep. And sometimes these blue lights can actually keep you up for an extra three hours at night. So you definitely want to stay away from using your electronics. Now there are some blue light filters that you can put on your computer screen or programs uh, that you can get to, uh, that you can download that block out some of that blue light. And there are also filters you can actually get on your reading glasses or your, or your regular glasses. I'm not sure about contacts, but certainly um, you can get them on your glasses and that does help. So what about naps? People are often asking me about naps. Well, naps in certain cultures are pretty mandatory. They definitely have the siesta in certain parts of the world. The thing about naps is that if you're taking a nap and then you have more difficulty falling asleep at night, then that is not a good thing to do. You definitely don't want to take a nap in that situation. But if you're taking a nap and you're able to fall asleep at a normal hour, then I think naps are okay. Now you don't want to sleep more than about 90 minutes to at the most two hours because that's a normal sleep cycle. If you sleep longer than that, it really will interfere with your sleeping. In the morning when you wake up, it is best to go outside and get some sunlight. Even if it's a cloudy day or rainy, you definitely want to go outside. That stimulates areas in your brain that release cortisol which wakes you up and also releases some dopamine, which is a feel-good hormone, and then also sends a signal uh, to basically time your body to release melatonin for later that night. So it is important to go out in the morning and expose yourself to light. What else can we talk about? Well, stress is a big thing. We want to make sure that we avoid stressful situations as close to bed as possible. And the best thing to do about electronics, by the way, is to not even have them in the bedroom at all. So 
hook your phone up outside your bedroom in the living room, move your computer outside the bedroom. Not really a good idea to have a TV in the bedroom, but I know many people do. So these are my top tricks and hints about sleep hygiene. And I hope that these have been helpful. If you need more information or want more information, you can look at my website, juliesygmd.com. You can certainly make an appointment to see me, and I would be happy to talk to you about many, many things. Um, and by the way, I do not recommend drugs at night to help you sleep unless there are some over-the-counter over medications like melatonin or valerian. There are a few good supplements that will help you sleep but I do not recommend sleeping pills at all for many, many reasons that we can discuss another time. So for now, I'm going to sign off for this week's Facebook Live. Once again, this is Julia Zweig, MD, and it's been great to see you guys, and I'll see you soon.